All right, this is Ed Carbajal for MiamiNews.com, and I'm speaking with Arlene Blenkow, who is facing, once again, Chris Cyborg, literally in a week. I mean, it's, it's right around the corner. Um, I know you just had a big media day. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I want to ask you, especially of, of with how the fight came to be. Um, when I saw uh, McCourt versus Kavanaugh, and Kavanaugh was being carried out of the cage, they, they announced her as the next contender, and yeah. when I saw her hurt immediately, I was like, no, it's not going to be her. It's going to be Arlene. Um, did that happen to you? Um, yeah, well, I actually didn't know what was happening, really. I wasn't expecting to hop back in the Bellator cage until sort of the second half of this year. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'd sort of made plans for maybe a possible um, return to the boxing ring in the meantime. So, but yeah, there were other names getting thrown around in the mix too. Obviously, Kayla Harrison, the potential um, signing of her to Bellator. Um, Kat Zingano, wow. there was, you know, there was a lot of stuff happening there as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, obviously sitting at the, as the number one contender, I knew that eventually it would happen, but um, I definitely didn't think it was going to be happening, you know, April 23rd. And Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really excited for you because, I mean, you know, we've we've spoken quite a few times, especially, and you've you've always kind of been right there uh, for the title shot. Uh, the fact that you you both have faced each other already before, I'm just wondering, like, after watching the press conference on Monday, there was just like a weird aura of uh, focus between the two of you, um, kind of like it's almost like it's a it's for the first time because something from that last fight seems to have uh, there's it, it's it's almost like there's uh, more of an edge. Uh, on your end because now you've you've crossed hands already you know what I mean like there's got to yeah. be a game plan that she's worried about uh, I know that Chris has got a lot of respect for me and um you know obviously my ability and everything like that too like it's a dangerous position for her being the champion you know a rematch is always dangerous um you know someone coming in and she knows that I'm hungry she knows that I want that title um and that yeah I've got a lot of power in my hands that can cause a lot of damage so you know that's always um you know a tough fight on both ends um mm. you know everything i want is on the other side of winning this world title so um yeah she knows that i'm coming in obviously this time um I've, I've been able to come over here to jackson wink and and work with the coaches and come up in a and formulate a, a game plan and um and yeah it's now just putting it into play on next saturday night and i'm bringing that world title home yeah i'm, I'm looking forward to the rematch to be, to be honest with you and does um I mean I know you said you trained with uh Volkanovski too, right? Um Yeah, yeah. Well I so, actually I was I was in the Volkanovski camp last time for the cyborg fight too. So um, you know, just training around COVID and everything made things a little bit hard though. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, no, that's so but that's what I was gonna ask you because he just picked up the win. Does that add to like the like like the sending energy your way, bring giving you more confidence for this rematch? hundred um, percent. I've been lucky enough to have a lot of Australian fighters sort of, um, you know, as teammates that have um, gone on to shock the world, like um, Alex and just his mentality and, be, you know, sharing the mats with him and mm -hmm. seeing what he does in his training and just his mentality. Um, I definitely feed off that. Um, got George Cambosis, who's fighting um, Haney in the boxing world. He just shocked the world recently, you know, the Australian underdog that everybody rid off and then he won and won all that, you know, won all those belts and, um, you know, tied to Avasa um, more so recently in um, the heavyweight division. Like, no one expected him to come through and do what he did. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, now I plan on being the female that comes through and shocks the world and um, leave my legacy in there. You mentioned, um, I mean, looking and thinking about other things, because I'm not going to ask you what, you know, what we should expect for you, because obviously you're not going to give away any, any part of the new game <laughs> plan. So, but you mentioned boxing. I mean, you mentioned Combosis and you mentioned that you were getting ready uh, to go back in boxing. I remember seeing, reading that yep. too. Um, was yeah. there, were there potential opponents already being lined up? Um, having already won like my boxing world titles in the past, I sort of can throw myself back into the mix. So it just depends on which, um, which of the titles I sort of want to head for. Um, I was just looking at having a warm up fight, obviously before I throw myself into a world title boxing fight, but, um, yeah, it's, it's kind of a shame because I've got this fight on April 23rd and, um, you know, George has got his... Um, fight in Melbourne in mm -hmm. June, which is um, ideally what I'd love to have been on, but it, it kind of puts me straight back into fight camp. And I plan on celebrating being the Bellator World Champion and, and taking all of that in. So I don't really want to go straight into fight camp. But um, there are a few girls on the local Australian scene that I would have been chasing um, just to win the Australian um, world title, uh, sorry, Australian um, boxing title. 
um, you know, obviously chasing all these world titles is great, but I'm um, a proud Aussie and I think having that um, green Australian boxing title is something that I definitely want up on my mantelpiece. Yeah, I mean, that would be really cool, especially it seems like, um, you know, there's with, uh, you know, Adesanya, Volkanovski and, and Whitaker and all those all those fighters seem to keep bringing a lot of uh, focus to Australia as far as in combat sports. Um, yeah. One of the, one of the thing I wanted to ask you uh, was the I mean, you mentioned also the difficulty of training during COVID, and I know the last time you were out here, you know, in the states and trying to fight and stuff like that, it was really hard with all the stuff going on in Australia and trying going back and forth. And you know, you were in uh, New Mexico for a, a little longer than you planned on being, right? Was it was did that kind of like mess with your your uh, focus and stuff be, uh, before and after the last oh. fight? Yeah, well, I literally was cutting weight when I found out that Australia cut, um, closed the borders and weren't letting me fly home. So to be fair, I just focused on the job that was ahead, which was obviously making weight and then, mm. um, and you know, beating Diana Silva. That was in July. So then, you know, I flew back here to Albuquerque and literally just went back to training. And, um, you know, Bellator were awesome enough to rebook me and, and give me that second fight um, mm. in November. So, you know, to spend six months here in Albuquerque working with the coaches and training with my training partners um, was awesome for my fight career. Um, it was a, definitely a long time away from home, like being mm -hmm. away from my kids. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, my partner was over here uh, with me. He was here for like two months of it. So that was cool, like an, okay. um, definitely an experience. But um, it was exactly what I needed in my fight career, I think. Like, um, you know, I'm lucky that both my kids are a bit older now. They understood the situation. I didn't have any, um, you know, tea phone calls with tears, begging me mm -hmm. to come home and this and that. So um, it was a great time for growth um, for me as a fighter. I mean, everything back home in Australia was closed. All the gyms were closed. Um, you know, Australia was going a bit crazy. So while all that was happening back at home, I was over here, you know, training and, um, and yeah, getting better. Good. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I'm glad to hear that because, I mean, uh, watching everything happen from, you know, far away it, 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 back in my mind i'm always like god i hope she's all right um one of the thing i wanted to ask you obviously now now things are a little bit more looser with covid and everything and and this is happening in hawaii i mean there's got to be some ex excitement to be uh performing on on bellator stage and one of the most sought after locations on the planet um oh. how's it feel to be going to hawaii for sure. It's, um, no, it's awesome. It's the first time in, um, you know, the eight years that I've been signed with Bellator that um, I've actually got people flying from Australia able to watch me. So, you know, both my kids are going to be cage side. I've got, um, you know, my mother-in-law and my sis uh, um, sister-in-law are coming over. Um, I've got training partners, coaches, um, all coming over to, um, like, to watch me fight. So, and yeah, it'll be an awesome um, holiday afterwards to sit back and relax, especially after a, a long, hard camp. Yeah, I mean, I, I am looking forward to it. I mean, it, it looks like, uh, I mean, it almost feels like there's a, a, everything is is set in motion to make this probably one of the biggest uh, fights, uh, title fights next week. And I know there, there's stuff going on tonight, but I mean, it looks like uh, with all the media fanfare and everything, um, all the energy is is positive going into uh, uh, the event next on the 23rd. Um, I'm yeah. not going to ask you for a prediction because I, I, one thing I do want I do you feel less the first time? Was there jitters versus now, or like what's the, what's the difference as far as your feeling going into it? Do you know what I was actually um, in a really really good place mentally? Like not once did I um, sit back and think, "Shit, like what the fuck am I doing?" <laughs> like <laughs> you know, at no stage did I look across the cage or you know weigh in and think, "Oh my god!" Like you know, there was never any fear. Even after I dropped that first round, I was. Um, you know, going into the second round ready to, you know, bite down on my mouth guard and, and get to work. So that side of things was really, really good. Um, the one thing I think I might have been lacking was just a, a game plan as such. Like, I mean, it's one thing just to say you're going to throw down with Cyborg, but mm -hmm. there's there's definitely some technical things. And, you know, being here with, you know, Mr. Winkle John and Coach Jackson and, um, you know, everyone here at Jackson Wink, like we've, you know, they've, they've coached people that have faced her and, um, you know, they've taken things away from that and, I yeah. feel like we've come up with like the game plan and I feel like I'm putting in some practice in um, training. Um, and yeah, it's just, just got to showcase it next Saturday night. That's, that's the plan. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to it again. I mean, I wasn't going to ask you any, any uh, like predictions or anything like that to give away because we're so close out. We're so close to it. They're going to be with you, right? For in your corner. Uh, yeah. Jackson? Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
Yep, I've got Coach Wink, uh, Greg Jackson, um, Joey. I've got my strength and conditioning coach from Ethos, me Orny flying over, and then obviously my partner who um, up until like the last fight was the first fight that he missed, but he's always in my corner. Nice. He's the behind-the-scenes guy that, um, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> Take fantastic. Take care of all the, other, the little things <laughs> that are big things. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Good luck to you. I mean, if you have any sponsors and stuff you want to shout out, I know you put up the mouth guard picture the, uh, a couple of minutes ago or whatever. So yeah, by all means, exactly. the floor is yours. For sure. Um, you know, long-time sponsors, AH Glass Fencing and Muscle Bros. Um, you guys have been on board since pretty much the beginning. Um, wouldn't make these fight camps possible without you. Um, you know, other sponsors, Three Kings Finance, um, Snatched Active Wear, um, Victoria um, Compliant Cladding, um, Freedom Chef, you guys are all awesome. Um, you know, all the help that I get, all the equipment, um, supplements, um, yeah, I appreciate it a lot. Thank you. All right, well, good luck to you. It's uh, a uh, April 23rd, Bellator 279 in Hawaii. Um, Cyborg versus Blankow, number two. It's it's, um, it's going to be uh, Well, I'm there too. I'll actually shout out to my manager, Chris. From MMAU management, um, oh. he's been my manager now for eight years, and yeah, it always gets me these big fights. And um, yeah, thanks, Chris. Wouldn't be able to do this without you. Yeah, the, the doodle that for me too, because he, he's the one that put us in touch. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> all right, take care. Good luck to you. All right, thank you. Thanks, Ed. See ya.